August 13th, 2012. Let me call Sorry. Bruce Bay Harbor. <laughs> Monday, August 13th, 2012. Let me call the Selectman's meeting, uh, Booth Bay Harbor Selectman's meeting to order. The, the board and our distinguished guests, we've got Julia Ladder, our financial officer in the audience. We have Kelly Bigas, our recording secretary. Tom Wooden, our town manager, could not be with us tonight, so he is absent. So we have J.D. Warren, Selectman, Art Hathaway, Selectman Vice Chair, Valerie Augustine, Select Person, and Bob Spillane, Selectman, and I'm Bill Hamlin. Um, before we go to approve the minutes, I'd just like to review the agenda for tonight because there's, uh, I think the copy that's been published is missing a few things. We have the introduction, which we just did. We need to approve the minutes of July 23rd and the August 6th meeting, which is not on some of the uh, agendas. Financials, the town manager announcements, which we will not have tonight. There is a public hearing for a victualler's license of Captain Sawyer's. Then we will have the public forum part of the meeting. And then in the old business, which has an update on the kettlefish lease, an update on the fish pier renovation. And then new business, and what's missing is approval of bids for a backhoe uh, for the Public Works Department. And then executive session, warrants, and move to adjourn. With that, that brings us to approving the minutes of First of all, July 23rd, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the Booth Bay Harbor Selections meeting of July 23rd, 2012. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor? It's approved. And now for the August 6th meeting. I motion we approve the minutes for August 6th. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the August 6th. In 12 meeting minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. We are approved. That brings us to the financials. And I'll turn the floor over to you. The revenue is 847,964 dollars Total expenses as you can see that a graph, um, we're at 2% of our budget revenue compared to last year at 1.9. So we're on target for our revenue. Um, our expenses are 7.1 versus last year 8.6. We haven't made you know, any capital expenditures this year to date. Until now. So um, that seems to have been lowered as far as the difference in expenses. Um, and our bank balance is $1,764,576. Which is just a tad over what we had last year at this time. Any questions for Julia on the financials? Thank you, Julia. That brings us to the town manager announcements, of which we don't want to have them since our town manager is not here tonight. Uh, the next item on the agenda is public hearings, the victualler's license uh, for Captain Sawyer's. This is a Class F uh, license. Uh, it is a new application, uh, and everything seems to be in order as I look at it. So do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to, I presume, approve this uh, license? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. The license is approved. The next item on the agenda is the public forum. Um, this is slightly different from what we've done in the past. We've moved it up to earlier in the meeting to give everyone a chance to speak before we discuss the business rather than after we discuss the business. It seems like a sensible thing to do. If you bring up something we want to discuss after, we've already discussed what we plan on discussing, can we discuss it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. so good Chuck, good Chuck would. Um, I don't, uh, I think we'll take that on case by case basis, but yes. Oh, possibly. Possibly, yes, okay, certainly right. not precluded. No. So, I, uh, I second that motion. <laughs> is there anybody who wants to speak to us from the floor? Yes. I'm Helen Bond with Bay Harbor. Question for the selectmen and for most of the town. Reference the hospital. Have any of the board uh, 
contacted anybody or talked to anybody, referenced and seeing how things are going, what the town would like, why the information wasn't out there for the town. Have you asked any questions at all? This hospital means a lot to a lot of people here in town, and not just here in town. If you get on the computer, Chris was reading one tonight from a letter from a, a doctor, Judy Stone, who evidently has summoned here and come here in the summers and everything, and is from away. She may be here now, I don't know. But there's quite a lengthy, lengthy item on there. Reference their town was small, and what happened to their hospital, and what their town did. And I think the board, as a board, and as townspeople, we should be doing something to get our hospital either back or something. Do something. Don't just let it go by the wayside. People are really concerned. And I've heard rumors all around, Chris has, and people are concerned whether they really want to retire here now. And this is a retirement community, period. And we all know that. But you look at a small town, and that has served people over the years. They have their own helicopter pad. They have three ways of getting help for people. Land, air, and sea. You know, that was promoted when St. Andrews was St. Andrews. And for somebody to come in and do things behind closed doors and pull the rug out from it, everybody under their feet is basically wrong. The town should have had some input. But where did I learn a lot of this? Not from our selectmen here in the harbor. I learned this from the Booth Bay selectmen. And I'm really upset that our selectmen, we had other things going, granted. But this is a very priceless entity. We need it. And it's, and it's a great, people just enjoy coming here, knowing they had, the, uh, had something they could depend on. If they had to have emergency care, not a Band-Aid station. And you're not going to get people nurses and doctors, if you're going to take away stuff. What happened to all the equipment that the town bought us, or that the people uh, gave money for, and the equipment? I worked there for 10 years myself. They worked out of there on the ambulance service. You could lose the ambulance service needs help with that also. And I think it's about time the board gets off there, you know what, and get going and find out information. If all else fails, we may still lose it. But at least you've got answers to questions. And maybe this will help satisfy a lot of people. It may not. It turned a small town in another area, one against the other. It just demolished the town. Because they, again, it was done by people that have the mindset for financial, the heck with people. Nobody cares. And, no, and that showed me that board did not care, period, for St. Andrews, this town, or the people. Thank you. you Helen, you asked, I think, some specific questions of us, and if the board I wouldn't mind, I'll take a swing at answering some of those. First of all, have we been in discussions? The answer is yes. Uh, you're foreshadowing what's going to come later on in the meeting, but uh, now's as good a time as any to, to try and talk to that. I've been, in I've been in touch with the chairman of the trustees of the St. Andrews Healthcare, and specifically talked with them about the community transition committee that they are setting up, and ensuring that we have a prominent role on that committee, and trying to understand what the charter of that committee is. And I will say right now, I don't have a clear indication of what the charter of that committee is. But we are in discussions with them and ensuring that we will have representation on that committee. Second point, I've been in contact with Chuck Cunningham at Booth Bay. 
and he has asked if we would be interested in having a joint meeting with them, and I've told the board I'm going to ask them that question tonight, and I'd be very surprised if the answer wasn't yes. Uh, but uh, that's what we're going to be doing later on. So I share your concern. I share your uh, uh, charge that we be invested in this process, whatever happens with it, uh, and, uh, and we'll do our best to try and respond to it and, and see what happens. I'd like to see it out to the public and not behind closed doors. Involve the public. And that's their biggest or nobody was involved. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, the meeting with, with uh, the joint meeting of the boards, if it happens, will obviously be a public meeting and open to all. I hope so. Now, it, it has, has to, be. to be. It's required. Thank you. I want to tell you right now uh, that I was involved, because in, I was born at St. Andrews Hospital. Dr. Phil Gregory sold me up three times. because when I read, nobody was allowed to go to those meetings. You know, you couldn't go as a citizen to speak. It was all closed doors. And that's what really made me angry with the whole situation. And I couldn't get a hold of anybody because nobody's ever there. Yeah. So that, that's my theory on that. And we will work to our best of our knowledge on this board to see if we can get something going here. And I hate to see that hospital uh, go. I've got a tree down there. I hope they don't cut that down because that was a honor of my brother, yep. Scotty Warren. And maybe that tree will be cut. I don't know. But my family put a lot of money into that when it was just a little, little uh, hospital. And it does aggravate me. I want to tell you right now. And I have made some calls, but it's hard to get those people. Seems though they're right. You know, the mindset is is is. We can't do anything and that's it. But I think we can. We raise money in this town, you wouldn't believe, everything. for everything. And if I had known what I'd known, that they were having financial problems that they said they said in the paper, yeah. then we could have done something. But we were, we were not informed. Sure I don't, am I right, Bill? I mean, yeah. we were not informed. We learned, None of the towns were informed. All of a sudden, this hit us. Yeah, we learned that, that Tuesday night meeting that's right. that Valerie and I attended two weeks ago tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And Helen, we are working on it. We're not. We're not going to drop this. And that's that. And you made very good points. Very good points. And you know, I was on the ambulance for 11 years. You know, I serve this community as medical, yeah. and we need that some facility. And I, and that's right. So you know, we are working on it, Helen. I'd like to see the three towns get together right. because I know Southport didn't know anything about it either. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why, do they say anything, Bill, about why they closed the doors on it and didn't have the town involved? Well, their, their arguments were that uh, it's a private corporation, not a public corporation. Their processes are different than town government processes, oh. that their, their board has 22 members from the area and that they had local representation on that front. Yeah. Uh, and that they owe the responsibilities to their employees uh, to tell them first before the information became public. That's what they said at the meeting in time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have it correct. There was a out in the paper that they did not want the public to know. It was their 50 employees that pertained only to, to them. them. They didn't want the public to know. They didn't want anything to do with the public. And that was very, very wrong. See, I, I couldn't, uh, you know, we elected Bill and, and uh, Valerie to go. I, I couldn't go on uh, any of us on the board because then we're in a situation against the violation of the code, right? Yeah, we can only have two members. So, two two people we go again. Yeah. Uh, but the, again, the, the meeting that, is to, that we'll discuss later on will be a meeting of the full boards, you know, if it goes forward, of the three towns, and it, it will be public meetings. Thank you. So I think I think we're on track to responding yeah. to your request. Mm -hmm. Are we? We're I starting. Hope so. I hope so. Yep. If not, I'm going to be back and do some more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any further for public hearings? Frank. Sure. Uh, several several items. One along the same lines with the hospital. Uh, I am to understand the call was made. And I'm sorry that Tom isn't here. Uh, to Mr. Wooden to find out. Uh, how Booth Bay Harbor wanted to go in this. There seems to be some question in the other towns. Booth Bay and Southport are definitely collaborating together, and I would urge you to collaborate with them. Um, and you've got to do it quick. I can't um, imagine that we wouldn't, but yeah, we'll go on that later tonight. It would be, yeah. And so my question was, and this is 
because we put the public forum up. Yeah. Um, uh, but um, would be uh, my question was what, what whatever came of that? What is Booth Bay Harvest desire uh, on that? And so maybe you can hammer that out tonight, and then I would make the call tomorrow if you're going to do it because you can't let this sit with with this yeah. corporation. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is I see the ad in the well comprehensive plan. I don't know where that's going. Um, I know I signed up for it. I know that June Phillips signed up for it. There was some grumbling from, uh, or some talk from uh, Mary Ellen Barnes uh, that only two people had signed up. So I guess we know who did. Um, Want to know how that's going? Um, Jeff isn't here. He's. It's not on your agenda. Um, what's? I mean, this is a huge deal, you guys. I mean, this is aside from a ton of money. This is the the flight plan for our town for the next 10 to 15 years. Booth Bay Harbor, you know, Booth Bay is way ahead. I mean, they are, I've gone to that meeting last week, that's why I wasn't here for the fireman's meeting. Um, they've got committees and subcommittees formed. They sent somebody here uh, to, 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 to invite, you know, you guys in to, to, to participate and to, and to audit their meetings. Um, uh, I'm hearing nothing on it. I have not received anything from Jeff or Tom or any of you saying, hey, Got your application, thank you. Um, that's no way to run a business, okay? You're asking for help, help is being reached out to you. Nothing has come across my email. I've been in the, I've been in the town office, um, I'm not hard to find, and, and I've heard nothing about it. This leads me to the ad that I see running the paper week after week after week. Four positions on the planning board, two positions on the appeal board, one position on the port committee, comp plan, has maybe two people, the latest news I have, and we didn't have a selectman run last time. You stepped up last minute, and then two write-ins. What is going on? I, and in Booth Bay, every board is full. Every single board is full in Booth Bay. Now, I understand, same language, different dialect across the line, okay? But we're the same people. What is the difference? Have we looked at what the difference is here? Can I you would tell say, me? I would say you're not reaching out to the public. I would say, and I'm going to get back on the Facebook thing, I'm going to get back on your crappy uh, uh, um, website. You, you can't. You can't work with that. You're not reaching out to anybody. Nobody know, Nobody cares because nobody knows. And, and you, I mean, if there, if there were like, you know, two or three positions in Booth Bay that are open, but there aren't, you can't get on a board in Booth Bay. And there's something going on, you guys, really. And, you know, I, I think that these meetings should be uh, public participation, not observation. And uh, you know, I keep I keep beating this dead horse with the Facebook and the and the and the uh, it, uh, this agenda wasn't even up today. I had to come in. Julia went and found it on a computer somewhere. Great, I didn't see it in the paper. I mean, what are we running? The agenda wasn't around today because because Tom was not in today. And I understand you you feel that. Um, as to the participation of the board, oh boy, we've reached out. I've called people. Um, we have the ad in the newspaper. Uh, it's I, not working. You know, I understand it's not working, but I don't think it's because we're not reaching out. I really reject that. I disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I, I totally yeah. disagree. I, I don't think people have any idea what's going on or, or if they should be concerned uh, about what they I should be concerned is, about. I think we're reaching out to people. I've been talking with people. I've asked people to join the boards. I've given names. You're reaching out to people um, using old technology. That's it. Well, we'll address the Facebook issue tonight, and then I think you'll be happy. Oh, good. Okay. I want to be happy. So, we want you to be happy. For um, yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Okay. Public forum. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Russ Brewer, uh, from Bay Harbor. Fisherman. Uh, kind of a lot of things we're really concerned with. The um, main one is the scale of fish. And, um, and the management of the fish pier, I think, actually is is in front of kettle fish, because if we had true management at that fish pier and true leadership, kettle fish wouldn't be a problem. It would be a done deal, just like every other section there. Kettle fish is a, you know, that facility, whether it's kettle fish or whether it's somebody else, is so important to this community in the future that we're looking at right now, it, it's really there. I mean, we've got Soul Maddox trying to do his halibut farm, okay? Those fish are gonna have, have a place to go someplace, okay? They've gotta be landed, there's, there's gonna be food, and all the stuff that's gotta get taken out to the farms, et cetera, et cetera, so there's a space there that's needed for that. Processing, 
I know Dave has talked to me personally about processing different different foods there, whether it be shrimp, lobster, or fish. Okay, that equates to better boat prices. Okay, now that's going to affect me. I land all three of those. So I haven't done my ground fish lately, but I'm going to be able to go back to that. The state spent I don't know how many millions of dollars in in um, in, in the um, permit bank. They, Three million. In that Three million in, in this, this permit bank thing, which is good for boats like mine who have lost their ability to fish through regulations. Now the states spent that money so I can go, believe it or not, buy fish so I can go fish. Okay? So that's there, and that's in its infancy to start up. And there's some of us that are going to be trying that. Okay? I really feel, I, I know, and, and I think Dave will agree with me sometimes, he gets very excited and passionate. And that passion that Dave brings, believe it or not, is good. It makes him a good businessman, in my view, for my dealings with it. And, and again, whether it's Dave or not, you guys got to find a way to get this done without tripping over, you know, saying, oh, we didn't measure long enough, so we got to have a work order set so we can pour a few more feet of concrete. That is key to, whoops, we're going to go over budget. Okay? Whoever's running that show needs to be done, and let's find a committee to take over that place and stop this problem. Okay? We've been how long? How many years trying to get Dave set up? Who's the manager of the fish? Two years. Two, two years? Yeah. Town started, manager is. It's, it's just back and forth. The town voted to buy the pier for fishing. The town voted yep. like, how many times to put money in it to keep it fishing. Okay? What's the hold up? I think we've been over backwards to try and get this thing going. I think we've been over backwards for the last two years to get this thing going. We had a demo schedule that we moved to accommodate Kettlefish's business schedule. We've extended the one-year lease twice. We've lowered his price twice so that he's paying less amount. Uh, you know, he asked for the right to put up signs to control access to the pier, and we gave him that right. He asked for exclusive right to dock a 90-foot vessel, and we granted that. He asked for a continuous concrete pad that you were talking about. I don't understand why that's a problem, but we said we can do that. But we have said we can do all of those things. And so I think we've been over backwards to try and get this deal in place. And the only thing we haven't been over backwards on is protecting the taxpayers $250,000 that's going to be invested in this. He has an opportunity to go forward with brand new processing building, brand new freezing building, uh, and a competitive uh, uh, lease rent. And we're prepared to do that. But we can't do it if he's not ready to really commit to it. And we're not going to put the town's money at risk. And the standard, I mean, I talked with four or five bankers, and every one of them said the standard of operation is a personal guarantee. And Davis said unequivocally he won't sign that. That's his right. But we can only do so much. So much. And I think we're doing all that we can. And we, yes, I agree with you. We need that fish pier. We need that to be operating. We need to have businesses in there. We've got three tenants, and two of those tenants have just been going like gangbusters and not had a problem with. The only problem we've had with is cattlefish. Okay, on the, um, the what, what you're asking to sign on, and we talked to the bankers to so clarify that. Is, that. is that the bond? Well, we came up with a number of ideas to get around that problem if he was interested. I think that to discuss this in the third person on behalf yeah. of Mr. Reingart is quite wrong legally. Uh, Mr. Reingart is quite capable oh. of discussing okay, his own business. It, I'll agree with that. I would make one correction that uh, yep. uh, that is that the public at the last general meeting or the last public meeting did not just agree to spend $250,000 on the fish pier. They in fact agreed to set aside $474,000. So I don't think that the public including this board or against anything in particular. Uh, there's $474,000 that have been made available for improvements on the fish pier. So I'm just, I just made that as a correction. It's, it was true. not 250 true. Yep. Well, from from the, the 
from someone that's on the side, it just seems like there's a, a clash of personalities and, and, a, and a really, you know, there's, there's something wrong someplace. Well, I appreciate your considered comments, uh, but I, it absolutely is the will of this board to see if we can't get that operation. Okay. But whether we can or not, I don't know. Yep. Now, say Mr. Rongard decides he said it, what's your next step? Well, I think that yeah, I think that's again a subject for yeah. for for a separate session. I don't so think that's a right question now, of public in session. Front of a horse? Pardon me. Right now, I'm putting the cart in front of a horse. Well, I think you are. Yes. There is eight hundred. There is four hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. There is. There are various propositions that that uh, the town has asked from various contractors to do various amounts of work, uh, and so on. And and that plan has been around for a long time. So, as the money comes together, as the quotes come together, yes, there are some differences. Some are more, some are less. But by and large, there's $474,000 available to do something on the fish pier. Uh, I, I, I just think it's wrong to discuss Mr. Reingart's business uh, in, in this particular session. Yep. Mr. Reingart, Mr. Reingart gets out of bed like I do in the morning, puts on his pants. He can talk if he has to talk. I'll be patient. Did, okay. Dave? I just wanted to comment on that spiel that you gave there about my rent being lowered twice. I don't know of it being lowered twice. I do know of it being lowered once about a year ago. Mr. Spillane suggested that since the buildings were in such poor repair Correct. that we lowered the rent at that time. As far as negotiating on this, this has been going on for basically my whole time here, seven years. Every three years my contract came up and we discussed it. Um, you're making it sound all rosy and stuff and, and I just, I have, I'm feeling offended because everything you said was very misleading. Yes, you did come to terms with me putting a sign up after a battle for what reason I don't know because it's public safety I'm talking about, and it, I had to fight you for it. That is just incomprehensible to me. It makes no sense. Um, and, I mean, I just want to, I want to defend myself about the rent part. Yes, I did get the sign, signage for the dog, which is, should have been done years ago. The conversation has been had years ago. I have, uh, I'll finish my, my say when we get to the fish beer business. I, Okay. Mr. Reinhardt, if I may, just to answer that, that question, it was not me, sir, that reduced your rent or suggested that uh, I reduce your rent. I think if you look at the record, you'll find that it was not me. I think it was your suggestion and the board followed it. It's what the board did in any event. Anybody else on public forum? Yeah, on this, uh, and I may be getting my issues mixed up here, but. Um, didn't you say that Mr. Wooden would no longer pass your questions or things on to the board? Absolutely. So if Mr. Wooden is a manager of that fish pier and a tenant has a question <coughs> for you guys that oversee the manager, why would why would he not pass information on to you or why would you He not, does. Why would you not be alarmed? That's the question. I mean is that yeah. true that Tom will not pass information on? I believe there was a single incident in which uh, Mr. Reingard made uh, a statement that uh, was offensive and Tom said, I'm not going to tell the selectman that in general. Uh, oh, so in general, the, the, the Absolutely. communication is open? Absolutely. Okay. okay. I and, and Mr. Reingard has my phone number and, and okay. has called me directly. I was directly. just concerned that if he was the manager, he was stopping. Then Understood. Was... Dave? Yeah, there was no statement made whatsoever, so he had no idea what I was going to, what message I was going to pass along. Um, so that's just untrue. And, and to get back to, I, I, I have, I was wondering if any of you have looked into why the uh, shell of the processing building came back at 277,000. Has anybody found out why? Why don't, why don't we um, conclude public forum and move on to the next old business, which is update of the kettlefish lease? Well, my question, I've asked this question because we're a month later here, and you, you've been sitting there saying how it's like all me, all me, all me. This is literally a month later. 
that you were going to look into this. I figured you would have it by the last meeting we met at, which would have been two weeks. We're now a month later, and you still don't have that answer, obviously. So in my defense, and I have to be defensive here because I'm feeling offended, um, you know, I just don't know that you're doing your work, and I don't want to go here anymore. This is what I don't want to do, and so I will stop with that. I just wanted to ask that question, and I want one more question, and then we'll get to me. I'm wondering if any of you were alarmed at all. I mean, speak up, please. Were you alarmed when I told you that contractors were being discouraged from bidding? Does that not alarm you as, a, as board members? It alarmed me to yeah, the extent that you insulted the town manager, you insulted the chairman of the board of selectmen, the vice chair, myself, and Valerie, in public. And I therefore move that there be no further discussion of your lease indefinitely in a public forum. It can be done in a private discussion in executive session this evening. Do I hear a second? No second, so you win. You can say what you like, apparently. But I will not participate in any discussion with you. Okay. Because I, because that. of your public discussion and your and your your I, I I'm just I, I'm another baffling. I'm just curious why nobody's alarmed by my statement. I Dave, mean, if somebody made that statement to me, I'd be alarmed. But it's okay. I, Dave, I'm very cautious. You asked a question. You haven't heard an answer yet. <coughs> okay. First of all, I'm sympathetic with Bob's motion, and and uh, I would. The only reason I didn't second it is because I think that public speech is very uh, critical. You asked if we had an answer. The answer is the bid was so high because it was indefinite. It was not well structured. It was an open-ended lease. Why is it open-ended? Because we don't know exactly what you want in a building. That was one of your tasks, is to come back to us with what you wanted. I sent and I have a manager's office and told them. We drew a little sketch. Yeah, I've seen that sketch, and that's not sufficient for a quote. Well, if we need to go to a, a uh, architect, I mean, that's what we need to do. Uh, Dave, I met with I you. Don't, I don't want to banter, so let's just move on. Here. Public forum, any further discussion? Seeing none, close that part of the, biz, of the uh, agenda. We're now down to old business, and update on kettlefish lease is, amazingly enough, the first topic. <coughs> Dave, you uh, called me uh, probably three or four weeks ago now and said you were going to pull out. Is that still your position? And you might have a letter here. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recuse myself, please. That is your right. Thank you. Just read the first paragraph. Uh, it says, It is with great regret that I withdraw from negotiations regarding the Fish Pier lease. I thank the citizens of Booth Bay Harbor for the privilege of leasing this property for the past seven years. Over that time, I've had the good fortune to learn about and meet its regional fishermen. Is there so I take that as a, a written answer that you are withdrawing from the negotiations. Right. Okay. That leaves us with a, uh, a second item, which we had voted in prior meetings that irregardless of our status of our lease negotiations with you, that we wanted to remove the aging and unsafe processing building and eventually the aging and unsafe freezer building. And as you know, we issued a request for quotes for that work and we did so at the time when we were still in negotiations with you, and we were trying to accomplish that this fall. And so we set a timeline that had the processing building being removed this fall. In order for that to happen, uh, you would need to vacate uh, that building by, I think it was August 20th is what the request was. However, you are the leaseholder. You have the right to stay in there until your lease terminates. 
so we need to know if you that is your intent, or with a reduction in your lease payments, would you be willing to remove your materials from the red building earlier so that we could, uh, by August 20th, so that we could proceed with the schedule as drawn up? Is that a question? That is a question. The, uh, the answer to that is, I think as the board you need to do your job, which is talk to the people I serve in this town, because as far as the red building, I'm not concerned about it. I will, it, we would definitely adjust the, the lease accordingly. I figure on a square footage, um, a square footage formula of some sort. Um, but as far as going from there, this is going to make it very difficult on me. And there's nothing in the end. But the cooler is the biggest building, the biggest problem. And I think that's where you need to talk to the people who are, who are, who I serve. It's, uh, the biggest customers is Atlantic Edge and Sea Pier. I serve a lot of individuals throughout all the other lobster buying stations in this region as well. But those are the biggest ones. We're now moving into a um, spawning closure, they're called rolling closures that come down the coast and there's always worries of getting bait. If you find, if you do your homework and these people tell you they are of no concern, we can negotiate you leaving everything sooner. I have no issue with that as well. But this isn't for me to say I'm not going to leave these people on the lurch. That's not going to happen. I appreciate that. So um, you guys move ahead with your job. I think, I think we need then to consider uh, uh, Tom has run the numbers based on the square footage of the buildings exactly as you uh, put together and the red building is uh, under slightly under half of the total square footage uh, of buildings that you have it's 4,270 square feet the total square footage of buildings is 8,540 square feet so I am going to uh, move that we would reduce your uh, lease payments by half which is uh, more generous than just a straight square footage calculation, more generous to you, which would reduce them from $1,683.33 per month to $841.66 per month, starting in the month that you turn over the processing building back to the town. And so that's my motion. And do I hear a second? I'll second. Second. So it's been moved and seconded that we uh, codify that offer to Kettlefish under their lease agreements. Is there any further discussion from the selectmen? All in favor? Motion carries. So that's the town offer from the town to reduce your lease payments to uh, half of what they are now in the month that you're out of uh, the red building. And if you can make it by uh, August 20th, that would be good uh, because we've got contractors standing by who would like the work. And then we'll start to uh, remove the unsafe building and to rebuild the pier underneath so we have a sound pier. Uh, underneath, and we will take every effort uh, to avoid uh, the impact on the entire fish pier area uh, as we can and try and keep both alleyways open and try and keep the traffic flow so that your business is not impacted by any more than it has to be, and so Eddie Tibbetts' business is not impacted any more than it has to be. So we await your answer. Okay. And I would like, uh, I think. For us, in order to plan, we'd like to have that answer in one week's time, if you could. You know, I don't know if I can, if I, if I speak loudly, nobody hears me. If I speak softly, nobody hears me. This is all contingent on a lot. In a week's time, are you going to have talk to the people I serve? That's my question to you. Uh, I understood your question to deal, you said the processing building is not such an issue. The issue is really with the freezer building. Right. We are not touching the freezer building any time in the near future. And so you're going to discuss this still in this week's time. And you're going to put that in writing as well. No, no, I'm, no, saying, I'm saying that the decision to move ahead and demo the unsafe processing building was actually I one that was made what earlier. We were discussing about the process. So we're building. moving ahead with that. You I what I heard you say is I'll give you an answer in a week. Discuss what I heard you say is discuss with the, with your customers, the people who serve, 
of the importance of the freezer building and what we do with that. And that seems to me a reasonable suggestion, and we will do that. But I'm just saying the timing of Probably. that is in the far future, not in the near future. Possibly in the next week. Not in the next week. I don't understand your question. Will you have spoke with these people in the next week? You, know, you seem to not think that I have plans to do, you know, I, I don't have a life to live or something. I, I just don't comprehend how you want something from me, but you're not willing to do something simple in return. It's like, I don't understand that. Uh, I don't understand because I think, you know, as I said like earlier, the whole thing is a business. Program. As I said earlier, I think we've been over backwards to accommodate you. I understand what you think. I heard that very okay. clearly. You should read the letter so everybody knows how I feel too. I will read the letter, and I'm sure you, it doesn't matter. You don't have to. I'll, I'll get there. Do we have any further business on the upgrade of the pier, fish pier renovations? I don't think we do. So just to summarize, you know, um, in a week we'll hear from Dave whether the agreement to lower the rent is satisfactory to him. And then we'll move forward with... If, if he agrees, then we'll move forward with the current schedule, which has him being out on August 20th. Uh, it has the demo starting uh, right after Labor Day, so that's the fish pier is not as congested. Uh, and then shortly after that, uh, Skip right out. We'll come in and start to rebuild the pier. Okay. In the meantime, uh, I suggest we listen to Dave's suggestion and talk with the other people about the timing and, and future of the freezer building uh, and get inputs on that. It is still in our plan to, since that building is unsafe and falling down as well, is to take that down. And then what the future lies is we had a party was interested in a long-term lease and we were willing and able to do a long-term lease yeah. and I would hope that others would come forward who are interested in the fish pier, who are interested in conducting business and talk to us as well uh, and we would try and accommodate them as we've tried to accommodate uh, Dave. And if Mr. Rangart does not agree to then vacate have, the red building and have his rent lowered? Then, then it's his building until April 2013. And we would have to wait until that time, and then we would begin our operations at that time. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And that is all I had under old business, which brings us to new business. And Thank you. Mr. Spillane, I think you're free to return. I do like it. The uh, first item under new business is uh, approval of the backhoe bid for the Public Works Department. The uh, budgeted amount uh, at town uh, meeting was $95,000. We received four bids, uh, the lowest being for the case uh, backhoe of $87,700. Uh, and then we have a note, and I've also spoken with Jody directly from Jody, saying he would like to upgrade the hydraulic hammer that was bid with the machine from a 1,000-pound class hammer to a 1,500-pound class hammer. Uh, by upgrading the larger hammer, the manufacturer told me the longevity would be 50% longer than with the larger one, and the impact on the backhoe would be a lot less, as in adding longevity to the backhoe itself. He didn't bid that originally because he didn't think the bids would be as low as they were and wanted to stay within the appropriated budget. With the increased uh, pound, uh, 1,500, one and a half ton pound class hammer, the total purchase price of the case would be $92,200, which is still less than the budget amount by the town. I move we accept the bid. Second. Case. Second. Uh, and just to clarify, you're moving to accept the bid with the increased uh, With the increased uh, size hammer. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? It's going to happen. Do you want to wait? <laughs> All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carried. Got yourself a new toy. You got a new toy to play with a bigger hammer. Bigger hammers are always good. More bang for the box, right? The second item that I had under new business was a discussion of the hospital, and we've uh, we've sort of already had the discussion. Uh, first, uh, as I said earlier, I had a call from Chuck Cunningham 
looking to set up a joint meeting of the select boards of Booth Bay, Booth Bay Harbor, and Southport to discuss the hospital situation. Uh, tell them I would raise uh, that uh, issue uh, with all of you tonight. Uh, I am in favor of having such a meeting. At this point, uh, I don't think there's any specific agenda, uh, but we need to, uh, to, as has been said from the audience, we need to get out on this issue and see what right. our options are and what we can do. I move we, uh, you, you contact uh, Chuck immediately, and, uh, or as soon as practical, and uh, that we set up a joint session. It would be nice to have both town chairs present as well. Uh, both town Not managers. Managers. Yes. Yeah. managers. Yes. Chuck, that, that would be good. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? I just have a question. Would this transition committee be under the umbrella of Link Lincoln County Healthcare, or is it on our own of the three towns? I think that transition, the community transition committee is a separate event from what we were just okay. voting on right now. In, in my mm -hmm. in, in yeah. my so any, any further discussion? Nope. All in favor? Motion carries. I will contact Chuck and tell him we are anxiously awaiting to getting a date where we can all meet. And then, as I said, I have talked with the uh, chair of the Lincoln, uh, Lincoln County Health Trustees, uh, inquiring about the Community Transition Committee and wanting to make sure that we had representation on it. And he said, as a matter of course, the town manager uh, would be on that meeting, and uh, and he thought it would be open to others of the town officials as well. There's a lot of interested people. Tom Tavener, yeah. the attorney, is very interested in uh, joining forces. He asked me if if uh, we could do something. And Good. I said, I think the best thing to do is to get together. Group. Pardon me? You've got a formidable group. I mean, you've got, you're going to be amazed yeah. who's going to come out of the woodwork. We could really, we could really be influential. Maybe we could raise enough money to buy them out, but I don't think so. I don't know. You never know. I tried to, I tried to win that 100000 every year that, uh, that the people of Booth Bay Harbor... A little bit more than that. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, we tried to win it. Yeah. And, and they, the hospital were, were getting about 200000 a year out of that deal. Yeah. And uh, one of the other concerns that, Ms., like Mrs. Farnham raised, is that there's the free bed as well, which is something that we tend to forget. The free bed is a, is a little goodie at the hospital that we toss a hundred bucks or something into a pot every so often and uh, that money should not go to Miles Hospital in my opinion. There should always be a free bed for somebody in Booth Bay Harbor. Well, I mean, it would also be nice to figure out exactly how much money these communities put into that hospital out of our own pockets over the years. I mean, it's got to be in the, I mean, like you, some people, you guys, we raise yeah. money for everything around here. Yeah. It'd be millions of dollars put yeah. in that. I mean, Sorry to have digressed, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we lose track of this every meeting. So, Valerie, you had a question. The Community Transition Committee, this one under the umbrella, is that going to be open to everybody, to anybody? I don't know uh, specifically <laughs> the answer to that question. The so I will find out. Yeah, the difficulty seems to be that this is a private corporation and they, mm -hmm. they really are being very restrictive about who they let into the meetings. Right. There were only, as you know, there were only right. you and Bill yeah. were the only people that. Yeah. There were two of us that were allowed, so is they, there any, they uh, kind of restricted everything. Bill, yes. Is there any uh, people at all? Any uh, civilians that went in there? Or any taxpayers at, at that meeting on yes. Tuesday night? Yes, there were three, four, four, uh, just taxpayers who showed yeah. up and attended yeah. the meeting, yeah. and and, and the press. were permitted to attend. And there was five or six or seven press uh, as well. So, uh, in retrospect, although they said. Nobody could come. They did allow the public to attend, but it wasn't well publicized. Uh, that's all I had under new business. I have something to bring up. Valerie has something under new business. What could that be, Valerie? I think we should talk about Facebook. <laughs> Valerie wants to talk what about that? Facebook. What, what, what? <laughs> it's, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a social networking website. Oh. And many towns have a page on Facebook. You can set up Facebook so that um, only the town uh, and the person operating the Facebook account uh, is allowed to comment on that page. So it can be a one-way informational site or it can be two-way informational if you choose to allow public comments. And so I'd like to make a motion to um, have the town manager set up a Facebook page uh, for Booth Bay Harbor with my willing help 
to help him, um, and to have a, a one-way communication Facebook page to begin with. It's been moved. So second. I, hear second. I hear seconds. Any further discussion among the selectmen? Nope. Seeing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Let that unanimous part be known. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will help in any way that I can. Great. Because I know everybody wants it, we all raise their hand. Uh, we had on the agenda a uh, uh, executive session for code enforcement matters. I am pleased to announce that uh, there was a meeting today with the code enforcement office and the uh, individuals uh, in that matter, and the executive session is no longer needed, so we will table that uh, executive session, uh, which brings us down to warrants. I motion we approve the warrants upon review. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the warrants on review. And my understanding, Julia, is we don't have all the warrants. We will have we them. Um, we didn't have internet service for a couple of days and we got behind in the computer. Yeah. Think, so so uh, at least three of us will need to come back into town office and sign if these. Three of you the, could come in tomorrow morning so that I can release the council payable. You do have the payroll of warrants. Yeah, we, yeah, we do have some warrants here for reviewing. And I, I certainly can come in tomorrow morning. I can too if you want. Okay. Yeah. So we will have that. So it's been moved and seconded to approve the warrants upon review. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. That brings us to a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. You have one more comment. Please. This is the after party. Right? All right. Okay. It's I'm unusual, but go ahead. <laughs> I'm a little concerned with you know, when I ask my first questions, I got a nice rosy answer. Okay? And then when Mr. Rygar spoke, it was quite a different story. And, you know, your side was kind of weird. I mean, I can't put my finger on what it was. I mean, there's something there that you're not very open. And, and I, it must be something to do with the past. I tell you, we are as open as we can be about this. I reject the notion that we're not open. You have heard. I must have missed something. Then. Well, there have been a lot of meetings that you well, haven't no, attended. I know there's been a lot of meetings and stuff. I'm saying, I'm noticing there was tension in the room. There was emotion. There was, you know, something Absol strange. Absolutely, there's okay. tension in the room. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Something strange. And I, I really, you know, Frank brought it up at the beginning of the um, set of, of the meeting. How come there's so many committees open? How often does this happen? You know what I mean? Is this is this part of why no one's coming here? Is what part of why no one's coming here? This, this tension, this this unable to you know, negotiate, I, this I, unable to make things work. I don't I don't think the fish beer issues have spilled over into our committee uh, attendance at all. Well, um, I don't see how they would. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, that's just one thing that I'm, I'm kind of, you know, have an idea of what's, from one side, what's going on. And, and what I'm saying is just, if you can see your faces, and if you can feel the tension in the room as soon as you started talking again. Mr. Brewer, may I just ask you a question? How, do you ever watch the Booth Bay Harbor Board of Selectmen's meetings on television? Once in a while. Did you watch the meeting two weeks ago? No, I missed it. I wished you had watched. Then perhaps well, you would have I understood had a lot the tension. Well, I on that, and they really weren't in your favor. Uh, that's good. That's what got me interested, mm -hmm. and it wasn't Mr. Reiner. It was a lot of people, evidently, they weren't very concerned. And, um, you, you know, I'm just trying to bring this up. I mean, I really think some personal feelings got involved in this, and things didn't go well. I don't know the whole story. Well, then I would suggest, yeah. sir, that you learn the whole story because the story has been going on for a long time. I've yeah, been a selectman here. This is my sixth year. And I took part in various discussions on the Fish Pier, mm -hmm. most of which were reasonably civil. There were a number that were certainly were not. But uh, two weeks ago, I think it's worth, before you comment, I recuse myself from any discussion on, on the Fish Pier, so I won't go into that. But I do suggest that you you uh, perhaps review the meeting. I'm sure it's still available on the internet or 
And perhaps you'd understand a little more, and perhaps I would too, but I've watched the meeting over probably four times. So uh, I rest my case. I think yeah. it's time we adjourn. Yeah, no, right. I got one more question. Well, let's, it's well, really, no, this is okay. a It's our meeting too. <clears throat> What's that? That's why we have a public forum, Frank. Right. He's not done meeting. You don't get to interrupt the meeting at any point you would like. Pardon me? You don't get to interrupt the meeting at any point you would like. I wasn't interrupting. I was trying to continue the forum. Can you still talk? I haven't heard a motion to adjourn, so. I move we adjourn. What do you want to say? There is a motion on the floor. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. That there is no discussion for that. All in favor? We are adjourned.